Hello, I'm Captain Hanich, and in today's video we'll be reviewing some of the fundamental skills required to use a compass in the field. We'll cover topics like parts of a compass, describe a bearing, and how to take and follow a magnetic bearing in the field. Today we're filming on the shores of Ella Lake. Today's video will cover map and compass skills. We will be covering the Red Star program, EOM222.02, Describe Bearings. Our main objectives are to learn the 16 points of a compass, define mills and degrees, and finally we'll cover the different types of bearings. Alright, so we're moving on to identifying the points of a compass, all 16 of them. We'll start off with the main cardinal points. We have north, always at the top. We move 90 degrees, so at right angles. We go to east, south, and west. A good way to remember them in, uh, in a clockwise fashion is uh, never eat shredded wheat. Good little trick there for you. So let's tie this into the actual bearing values. So north is always zero degrees or mils, but it can also be referred to as 360 degrees, or if we go with the military or metric, it's 6,400 mils, all right? When we move over to east, that's 90 degrees, a 90 degree angle, or we have 1,600 mils. South is 180, a 180 degree line, a straight line, or 3,200 mils, and we have 270 degrees, which is west, or 4,800 mils. We can further divide the points of a compass in the four intercardinal points. So these are areas that sit between the four main cardinal points. So between north and east, we have northeast. So at a 45 degree angle, all right? Between uh, south and east, we have southeast. Then we move to southwest and northwest. Finally, we get into the eight intermediate points. Drawing starting to get a little bit cluttered here, but we move 22.5 degrees or 400 mils from north. And we end up with north northeast. Over here we have east northeast. So an easy way to remember that is always start off with which main cardinal point you're closest to. Down here in this uh, quadrant we have east southeast. Then we're closer to south so we go south southeast. Move over to the west side. We have south southwest in this area. Here we have west, southwest, west, northwest, and finally up here we have north, northwest. So there's your 16 points of a compass. So some key points to remember of the 16 points of a compass. Your main cardinal points are north, east, south, west. Never eat shredded wheat. We further divide into northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest, and then it can be further divided into the eight points like north, northeast, east, northeast, and so on. All right, let's move on to the scales of a compass. The next topic we're going to cover is the scales of a compass. There are two methods uh, used, so degrees, found more in the civilian world, and then there's the mills, uh, the metric version used on the military side. Most of your cadet work uh, will be uh, taking place on uh, using the mills scale. So as you cover mostly in school, you're going to be using the, uh, the degrees of a circle. So north is either listed as zero or 360 degrees. Then 90 degrees over is east. South is located at 180. 
and west is 270 degrees. If you want a more accurate method of shooting a bearing or referring to the scale of a compass, you can use the mills. Because we do lots of orienteering and map and compass work on the uh, cadet side, uh, the mills scale is, is a much more accurate method to use. So north is zero or 6400 mills, east is 1600 mills, and south is 3200 mils, west is 4800 mils. An easy conversion, if you're stuck doing a conversion in the field, um, one degree is equal to approximately 17.5 mils, uh, so that you don't have to start playing with decimal points in the field. If you round up to 18, uh, that will be fairly accurate. So one degree would equal 18 mils. Parts of the compass. We have the sight located at the top of the compass cover. This is used to align the objective or bearing. We have the compass cover. Protects the compass dial and housing the sight mirror. The sighting mirror itself, right here. The sighting mirror is used to see the compass dial while setting a bearing, like this. The sighting line, the sighting line is used when aligning the objective or bearing. Right. The luminous index point right here. The luminous index point at the top of the compass dial is where a bearing is set and read from. All right, so if I wanted to adjust to 3200 mils, I point it to the luminous point. The orienteering arrow, so that is the uh, red one inside the uh, dial. That's what we refer to when we say put red in the bed. So if I'm going to travel at 2600 mils, I would lay that flat and I would actually use my mirror, make sure that red is in the bed, and that is the direction of travel. The Romer 1 to 25,000 is located on the base plate down here. All right, used to get your uh, grid references. The compass base plate is the actual flat piece of plastic. Uh, the, uh, the base plate is a clear piece of flat plastic to which the cover, dial, and lanyard are attached. The declination scale is the small scale inside the dial. Compass meridian lines are the uh, black lines in, on this compass that are used to uh, compass dial and are used to line up the compass dial with the grid lines on a map. Magnetic needle is the actual red and black needle that points to magnetic north. Luminous orienteering points. There are two luminous orienteering points located on either side of the orienteering arrow. So, right there. The Romer 1 to 50,000 scale, so on the left side of the compass uh, base plate. The safety cord or lanyard is right here. It's attached to the base plate. It holds the declination uh, adjustment screw uh, tool. The adjustable wrist lock right here, so if you want to tie it to a smaller object, this one's got a bit of a knot in it, but you just press here and you can adjust it up or down. The screwdriver is right here, and that's how you adjust the declination 
on the uh, base plate. So you just put that in there and adjust it to the value that you've calculated through a magnetic declination. And the declination adjustment screw is the one that I just showed you here at the base of the uh, plate. And that will adjust your, uh, your declination uh, scale on the inside. Let's do a quick review on the parts of the compass. The sight, compass cover, sighting mirror, which holds the sighting line, the compass dial, dial graduations, and 50 mil divisions, orienteering arrow, located inside the dial. The 1 to 25,000 Romer. The compass base plate. The declination scale found on the inside of the compass dial. The compass meridian lines, black lines inside the dial. The magnetic needle the needle that actually moves in the compass and points to magnetic north. The luminous orienteering points found on each side of the orienteering arrow. The 1 to 50,000 Romer. The safety cord or lanyard. The adjustable wrist lock. The screwdriver and finally the declination adjustment screw located on the bottom of the base plate and those are the parts of the compass the ability to measure a bearing from a map allows cadets to plan routes or activities before going into the field and allows an easy method of communicating information about movement or location now we're going to cover how to measure a magnetic bearing on a map. We have a map of Cape Real, and today we're going to plan on going from the town of Cape Real to Ella Lake. If we look at the map, north is pointing up, we know that generally we're going to be going in an east direction to go from Cape Real to Ella Lake. Next, I'll show you the step-by-step -step process on how to get your magnetic bearing. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a pre, uh, the predetermined declination on our compass. We've done that already, our uh, compass uh, declination for this region and for the time is uh, 9 degrees west. So that has been set. We're going to identify and mark the start point with an A and a B. So we want to go from Capriol, let's say the edge of the C, like that, with an A. And we want to go on the island of Ella Lake, and that's going to be our B. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to mark a line. Let's use a binder here. Now we're going to mark a plotting ray between our two points. Like that. So right away, if we're looking at the map, and north is at the top of the map, we know that we're going to be going in an easterly direction. It's going to be just slightly above uh, 1600 mils. All right, if that makes sense. Now we put our compass, we open our compass flat, and we use the base and the sighting mirror, and we put that on our plotting ray in the direction of travel. 
Okay. Now we're going to hold the compass in place and we're going to rotate the compass dial so that the compass meridian lines align with the easter easting lines on the map. Okay, so our eastings are the up and down lines on the map and our meridian lines are the ones that are the black lines that are located in the uh, center of the compass dial. Always make sure that your north is aligned with the north on the map, but your compass is pointing in the direction of travel. All right. Now you're actually just going to read the um, the number on the compass uh, at the luminous index point. All right. So that value is roughly. 1800 mils Let's see if you can see that 1800 mils which makes sense because east is 1600 mils and we already knew from a rough look at it that we'd be heading in an easterly direction all right so that is how you set your magnetic bearing by measuring a magnetic bearing off a map all right, so let's uh, cover another example. We're going to go from uh, Lac Saint-Jean. North tip of Lac Saint-Jean is going to be A. And we want to travel to this point here on Moose Lake. So that is B. Considering that our map is at the top of our map is north, we know that we're going to be going roughly west. So I'm going to mark my plotting ray from A to B. Like that. I'm going to lay my compass flat on my plotting ray. Next, I'm holding the compass and I'm going to turn my meridian lines so that they line up with the eastings on the map, like that. And I always make sure that my compass is pointing in the direction of travel from A to B. I read my bearing and it gives me roughly 4900 mils which makes sense because 4800 mils is west all right so we're in the field now we're going to put uh, some applications to the test here um, for this example we uh, we would have been given a bearing to travel and a distance to travel by our uh, section commander uh, or something that we've taken off the map. So let's travel at, let's say roughly 4,200 mils. So I'm turning the compass dial so that it points to 42. Next, I'm gonna adjust my, I'm gonna set myself up so that my compass is nice and flat. I adjust the sighting mirror so that I can see what's going on in the compass dial. And then I align the compass so that the magnetic needle is inside the orienteering arrow, or red is in the bed. And I'm taking a shot off a prominent object. So you can see there's two birch trees. There's one birch tree that's pretty much in line with those two sawhorses. And that's the one that I'm going to be going towards. This is interesting here because we have a water feature, which is basically an obstacle for us. We're not going to send our cadets through that. So I'm going to have to find a way, a safe way around this. I'm going to go down the trail, cross the bridge, and get myself back in front of that white birch tree. And then I'll take another shot. All right, so I'm carrying on with my bearing of 4,200 mils. And for this leg of the route, 
we're traveling like roughly 1.5 kilometers so a good trick to improve your accuracy and your chances of getting to your final location is to take the least amount of shots possible so in this example we're getting into some pretty thick vegetation here so it gets a little bit tricky to pick out a prominent object so we're going to introduce the leapfrog method I have a cadet in the uh, that's ahead of me and I'm going to send uh, that cadet as far as I can to reduce the amount of shots that I'm taking. Carry on! Always have the cadet facing away from you, that way direction is a little bit easier. To the right! Okay, forward! Okay, so you can see that we have 4200 mils set. Our magnetic needle is inside the orienteering arrow. So I'm going to move the cadet a little bit to the right. Move to the right three paces. Good. Good. And now we proceed to the cadet. You can bring your entire section or your entire group. You reset up at that location and then you send your cadet ahead again. That's the leapfrog method. Calculating the bearing that you want to travel on or one of the uh, sections of your route can be done electronically as well. Today we're using the Garmin Base Camp program. So I want to go from, let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go from this cottage across the lake to this cottage. I'm just going to zoom out a bit so that you can see the, uh, the, the buttons that I'm going to be using. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create some waypoints. So you go to new waypoint. I'm going to go from this cottage to that cottage. Next, I want to do a new route. So I'm going from, again, cottage A to cottage B. Right click your mouse to get out of the uh, route application. Then you go to the selector, and we're going to go here. Let me zoom in a bit. So for this leg of the route, or my bearing to go from A to B, I'd be traveling at 106.8 degrees. I'm going to pull up my iPhone and use the calculator app. So 106.8, 106.8 times 17.8 mils in one degree equals 1901 so I will set a bearing in mills on my compass of 1900 mils so I have my compass here I have already calculated my magnetic declination to be 9 degrees west and that's been already set using the adjustment screw I calculated that to go from cottage A to cottage B, I would have to set myself at 1900 mils. So that is set right at the top here, 1900 mils. So the next thing I would do, I will uh, show you how to take a proper uh, shot, but I'm gonna have to hold my compass nice and level, and I would put the magnetic arrow into the orienteering 
arrow or my magnetic needle into the orienteering arrow and or else put red in the bed and that would be my direction of travel. So I'm standing at cottage A and I want to travel to cottage B which is across the lake. Right over there. So we're going to take our compass, setting that to 1900 mils. I want to hold that. I'm going to adjust my sighting mirror. I want to hold that so it is nice and flat. I put my red in the bed and that would be my direction of travel. Once I get there if I want to come back home then I would take my back bearing of 5100 mils so completely opposite on the uh, compass dial and I turn that to my luminescent point and that would be my new direction of travel to get back home. Another use for a compass is to actually measure a bearing from an object to an object. So for example if I wanted to travel to the travel trailer or to the camper I would, uh, I would be able to measure a bearing. So I start off with my compass at zero I'm going to hold it nice and flat. I use the sighting mirror to do my work. I turn the compass dial so that the orienteering arrow lines up with the magnetic needle. And then I can just read my bearing at the top of the compass dial here, the one that lines up with the luminescent point. And we get a bearing of 1900 mils. Being able to determine the magnetic bearing of a prominent object, take a magnetic bearing on a map and follow a magnetic bearing will assist the cadets in navigating a route during orienteering and expedition training. All right, in today's video, we reviewed how to actually use one of these. We covered uh, parts of a compass, describe a bearing, and how to take and follow a magnetic bearing in the field. Remember, the only way you're going to feel more comfortable with this uh, tool is to get out there and practice these skills. Thanks for watching.